Good afternoon, everybody. It's Gary here, Fathers for Justice South Africa. It's the 8th of July, 2021. And our beautiful Lee uh, sent me something that she wrote a while back in lieu of the interview that I did on Monday with uh, Susan um, from SA Commuter uh, Radio Station. Um, I'll put the link in the in the description below so that you guys can listen to that as well. But one of the questions that Susan asked me was around uh, supervised visits. <laughs> um, outside of violence or abuse or neglect, there is no reason for supervised visits for starters. The second thing is that specifically when social welfare workers are involved, um, who are blatantly, openly hostile against men, gender biased, and they come with their feminazi um, predisposition that all men and fathers are rapists and murderers and, you know, basic excrement. Um, when in actual fact, the very individual that they should be investigating is the person that's calling for the supervised visits. Invariably. Because that is the person that is abusing the children. Okay. So let's just put that out there. So anyway, our beautiful Lee wrote this and she wrote it a while back and she sent it to me in, in lieu of the, the, the conversation that I had with Susan on SA Commuter, Commuter on, on Monday, uh, on, sorry, Tuesday. My, my, I've lost a a day. I don't know how this week. So anyway, this comes from Lee, our beautiful Lee. The real price of supervised visits. From the initial father who called me in late 2014 to the 20 plus fathers late in 2018, there is one significant commonality. Dads and supervised contact. One day you are a parent. You kiss your child goodnight every night. You are a significant part of their every day. You continue to live in the family home. And while there is acrimony, you hang on. As you know, once the door shuts, the fight starts. Dads I've seen make the same mistake over and over and over. You accept supervised contact without ascertaining as to the risk you allegedly pose to your child without a clear plan of intervention to eliminate this risk, thereby maintaining a healthy parent-child relationship. There is no outcome or time scales or reviews of the supervised contact. There is no scale of child's need in terms of contact with a non-custodial parent. Even though there is an abundance of information and research available, it appears to be a whipping stick, a stalling mechanism, Measured by finances, if you have the money to pay for the supervised contact, mm, that's a very big one. Okay? Not, all, not at all in the best interest of the child. It's never authentic quality time that a parent would share with a child. The parent is always under scrutiny and knows that all will be reported to the courts. It's a malicious witch hunt, guys. Yet the desperation to see your child is immense, emotional and consuming. It is a cycle of desperation, loss, living for the next few hours of contact, back to waiting until you can see them again. Dads try to WhatsApp or video call their children. However, children don't want to be tied to a device to have contact with a parent. They want their parents visibly felt and physically present to them. One of my cases told me that he had spent a huge amount of money with mandated social worker. For 39 hours contact. The contact was for all three of his sons. However, however, he often only had two children attend due to the long periods of absence. The father has bought with everything he has available in, in admits of having two serious operations. Losing his employment. Financial abuse, guys. How many times do I have to say it? Uh, close family members being diagnosed with cancer. Countless court cases. The, the continuous legal abuse of the system to grind the father out of the family life. 
police involvement, unnecessarily involving the police in matters that don't concern them, wasting police time, police having to investigate false allegations. 52% of the time, protection orders are in issued under false, fake or spurious information. Huge legal fees. How many times have I spoken to you guys about that? Whilst riding the emotional turbulence without a parachute. So the lesson in this little article is as follows. Find out what is the real price of supervision. Ask the questions as to why you are being supervised as the non-custodial parent. Guys, if you are not guilty of anything, what are you being supervised for? Are you a rapist, a murderer? Are you dealing in body parts, human trafficking? What? If you have done nothing wrong, why are you being treated like a rapist and a murderer and a pedophile and a psychopathic narcissist? On what basis in law? If you have done nothing wrong, why are your, why are your constitutional, legal, financial, emotional rights being unilaterally removed from you? Explain the, the judge and the magistrate and the social welfare worker and the mother and the, her lawyer and her child abusing psychologist must explain themselves on what basis in law. If you have done nothing wrong, why are you being treated like a criminal? Ask what interventions or programs you can attend to minimize the risk that you allegedly present. So they make all of these allegations. Let them present the, the remedial action that needs to be taken, that you need to engage in. What is the time scale? How many times do I say this to you guys? Detailed, quantifiable, measurable. I say it to you guys all the time. What is the time scale of the supervised visits? Detailed, quantifiable, measurable, defined. How will these... How will these be assessed and does the hours of supervised visits benefit the development needs of the child? Okay, and I would go one further. How does it help the reintegration of the child with the father and the father with the child? What are they doing about making sure that this is a happy, safe, loving, caring environment? And I can tell you now, supervised visits is a tool to, to gather the smidgen, the ball hair of evidence to persecute a father. That's what supervised visits are for. Okay. If you've done nothing wrong, do not agree to supervised visits. The very person that should be supervised is the child abuser, is the alienator along with his or her lawyers, advocates, psychologists, and social welfare workers. Stop believing that you are the problem. Stop acting like a criminal when you have done nothing wrong. Wanting to be a father is not a criminal offense. Stop behaving like a criminal. Guys, so long as you act in isolation... So long as you try to fight this monster in isolation, you will continue to be destroyed. Join the class action suit. Otherwise, come to me with alternative programs. Okay. Membership fee, 90 bucks a month. You need assistance, you can email me on info at f4j, the number 4j.co.za and uh, alternatively get us on www. Uh, f4j.co.za so it's the number four f4j.co.za like share and subscribe bring on new members um please like share and subscribe this video please go onto our linkedin uh youtube and uh facebook page i'll put the links in below like share and subscribe love to you all